part four chapter seventeen of short history of the christian church by john fletcher hurst this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter seventeen swedenborg and the new church the spiritualistic element in the system of emmanuel swedenborg born sixteen eighty eight was a reaction against the gross materialism of his times the swedes were not given to speculation but were cool and careful thinkers adhering to the lutheran standards and giving but little attention to theological discussion the formalism of german protestantism was imitated not only in sweden but throughout scandinavia the new movement under swedenborg was in antagonism to the general religious life of the country but to this day it has never gained any real strength even in stockholm where swedenborg was born and where he elaborated his system there was nothing in the early years of swedenborg to give any indication of his latter position in the modern church his tastes were scientific he devoted himself to chemistry and other studies and became assessor of the swedish mining college he was an industrious author in mathematics natural philosophy mechanics and botany his economy of the natural world was an important contribution to the studies of the exact sciences he suddenly emerged in a new character taking science as a basis he engaged in religious speculation and hesitated not to treat the past the present and the future with equal daring in due time he discarded the scientific basis from which he had started and his religious speculations showed no trace of close reasoning having but little hope for the acceptance of his opinions by any considerable number of his countrymen he left stockholm for england here he gained a wider following though his opinions were derided with equal vigor by both the skeptics and the orthodox his literary labors were enormous the new church which arose from his opinions was furnished at the start with a theology prepared by him to which no important accessions have come since his death in seventeen seventy two swedenborg claimed to have the power of penetrating the spiritual world and of comprehending with minuteness the character of the future he believed firmly in rewards and punishments and held that the vocations of the present life are to be continued in the future but with increased enjoyment or suffering according to the deeds done in this life he rejected the doctrine of divine satisfaction his view of the scriptures was that they are a gross representation of the divine will here swedenborg was a mystic for he claimed that there was a spiritual insight which could largely supplement the bible swedenborg prophesied that between the years seventeen eighty and seventeen ninety there would be a great enlargement of the new church here he was correct many followers grouped themselves about the new theories dr john clois exerted a great influence in their favor and sundry societies arose in their interest the writings of swedenborg were translated into german and gained a good number of adherents in various parts of germany in poland and hungary societies were organized however in all these countries there was no common bond of unity each society was left to develop itself as it saw best and the result was that there was no general unity of faith each interpreting the matter as it pleased and wandering at will from the original standard some societies have arisen in the united states especially in boston philadelphia and cincinnati the book of worship and liturgy of the new church is used by all of them but the theology is varied the swedenborgian adherents in the united states deviate widely from the evangelical confessions and belong to the group of liberal christians they are distinguished for their humane sympathies and advanced culture end of chapter seventeen